Hi everyone, day 99. Today is the, or today, tomorrow is the big day 100. Like I should be jumping up for joy. And today's Friday, so it is now eight weeks post-op and I'm fixed. <laughs> You're supposed to, what is it, six to eight weeks? It takes six to eight weeks to recover from a dull mastectomy. So today I'm officially recovered. Um, I didn't see confetti fall down from my room when I woke up this morning, so really nothing is different other than the fact that I dropped my son off at school today. Um, I had to leave my apartment yesterday because of stuff that they were doing, so it required me to be out of the house and forced to drive, which was not part of my plan to drive as much as I did, but I did, um, and I'm sore and my head hurts. Um, tamoxifen update. Yeah, my head. I've been having headaches. Um, not horrible, but like now, um, I just, I need to have caffeine and it will go away. Um, and I started actually doing a vlog and then I got a phone call from Newton and we all know like, you know, anytime you're on the phone and you see a phone call from Newton, you have to just like stop what you're doing and go answer because you know it's someone making another doctor's appointment for you. This is my life for the past 99 days. Like 99 bottles of beer on the wall. But I have no desire to drink 99 bottles of beer. Um, yeah, I look like holy hell, whatever. People that have seen me in real life lately, like I went to a couple of, I mentioned like events lately and <laughs> like, oh, you look like nothing ever happened. I'm like, great, because today I don't. <laughs> so you focus on what I looked like then with all my makeup and whatever. I still have mascara on. Like I, <laughs> I was wiping my eye. I'm kind of glad that she called because I had pulled... So I, I, I used a makeup remover wipe, but I have like really hardcore uh, waterproof mascara and I used a, wipe, a makeup wipe to get it off. But even so, I went like this and look at that. You see that? Wait, where is it? Right here. Uh, I'm so bad with my camera right now. That black stuff. That's my mascara. It's still flaking off. Um, it's gross. Anyway, I don't know why I just showed you that. I am in a really weird, weird, weird place and like all of this so uh why did newton call today so um had a call <coughs> yesterday with my oncologist and i you know i'd filled in on what's going on with my uterus and that you know i was starting the lupron so she called to schedule the whole bunch of shots today um and my follow-up so uh my phone call with yes yesterday with um, oncology was um, reassuring in that uh, my FMD is really not going to play as big a part. The main issue here is let's take care of the cancer, um, which is you know good. Uh, but the tamoxifen side effects um, that I'm dealing with right now are the headaches, not bad. Like I I they're just annoying. Um, and it makes me nervous when I get headaches because that happens with the FMD too. And then I start thinking, are my pupils dilated? You know, are they the same size? You know, I'm much more aware of moving my left side and my right side. If I smile, th this is like everyday life for me with FMD. That I, if I start to get a headache and I feel funny, I smile. And then I feel the sides of my mouth because I'm not always looking at a camera to make sure both of the sides of my lips are um, going up at, at, you know, the same, uh, the same height. Um, which is just like a silly little thing. Like people could look totally normal, but if you have FMD, um, you know, you check for signs of stroke. So these are quick things you can do to check for signs of stroke when you're on the go. I'm in like ginormous sarcasm land because I'm just mad at the world right now, except for about like five people. Um, I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm mad at the world. I'm all over the place right now. Shocker. That's like the past 98 vlogs I've had. Um, 97 actually. I skipped vlogging twice this week. See how all over the place I am? Congratulations if you can keep up with what the heck I'm talking about. I didn't vlog twice this week. And you didn't even know. But I'm telling you now because I don't like lying out of omission. So, yeah, I skipped vlogging twice this week. Once I had, like, really nothing going on. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe I don't have to vlog all the time. Um, I think that was my last vlog. And then yesterday, I was there were just so many things that happened that pissed me off. And I did not... My morning was great. I went to breakfast with a friend and then all of a sudden it just went like rawr, 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 and just one thing after the next, not even related to the cancer, but it just made it more exacerbated because 
I couldn't like be quickly in action to do things. For example, I had to clear out my entire kitchen with 24 hours notice, like plates, KitchenAid mixer, <laughs> all food and pantry, um, nothing on my counters, all the appliances, like movable appliances, Christmas plates, um, pots, pans, all of it. Everything had to be out of my room uh, or out of my kitchen. And I, you know, having the limited mobility that I have, that's not easy. And I, I, I thank the Lord above for Barb who came over to do that because it's not an easy feat for anyone, even if you're fine. But I started to move stuff and I'm like, my son's bedroom right now is like my kitchen. It's, it's, it's ludicrous. And I found out they have to come back in four weeks and I have to do it again. So I'm like, do I want to move my stuff back into my cabinets only to have to move it again in four weeks? Or do I just use my son's room as my kitchen? Um, normally like there's a ton of perks to living in an apartment, but when you have neighbors that are total turds, um, it's not so marvelous. And I'm thrilled to find out that my neighbors downstairs are moving out. I'm thrilled that you're moving out. I've not been a very kind person. But you know what? That's okay. Because I usually am. And um, that's just not where I am right now. I'm just mad. I'm mad. I'm mad at the world right now. And, you know, you go in your stages. Stages. I hate that word. You go in your phases of, like, you know, the, the steps of healing or whatever the hell it's called for this. And, like, I'm just in a pissed off at the world stage right now. Like, why can't people do what they're supposed to do? You know, why are some people just like on their freaking high horses? Why are some people oblivious? You know, why don't people like just do what they say that they're going to do? Why are people that are like very well off live in their own little freaking land and then other people are just like struggling and they're like, oh, I'm sorry. I'll go talk to you later after I, you know, eat my cherry bonbons with my Mercedes and like whatever. Not everyone who's rich is like that. I know that. But I'm coming across several people that um, are just making me mad. And I'm grateful for the people. My, my son, my son submitted his first college application yesterday. And I read his essay and, um, I read his essay and his and his short little essays he had to write, and they're so like it makes me so proud of my kids. It's such an emotion as 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 crazy as it is, like with the whole college application process, when it all gets pulled together, it's just like total light at the end of the tunnel. And granted, he has one down, and he's applying to like nine others. It was eight others, but apparently if you apply to schools in California, it's one application for um, several schools. So he just tacked another one up. So who knows what will happen, but I'm extraordinarily grateful for um, all the people that have been working with him to get that done. Um, and that have helped me out with stuff. Um, it's amazing how many resources there are, not just for help, but also with finances. Things are starting to add up. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting that like the amount of co-pays I have for things is starting to add up. And like, you know, I'm comfortable, whatever. But like, when you have all this extra medical expenses that you're not anticipating, it's like, holy cow, you know, and granted, it's, it's great to have things like the LE fund where they, you know, give you stuff for groceries or um, someone to clean my house and the irony is like I can't have someone clean my house right now until they're done treating all this shit and in here that they that they are I can't even vacuum yet <laughs> so I have to like go a month without vacuuming and dusting which you think would be good but I kind of want to just clean my place and like in a month I'll be back at work and it'll be harder to do that well I guess maybe that's good timing because I'll be back at work and then I can have this company come um but the LA fund gave me uh some gift well they sent me a gift card for Wegmans and I think I get another one pretty soon and then they also sent a gift certificate for a cleaning service to come um I don't know it's 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 uh it's a service I've never used so I don't know like how many cleanings you get with that amount of money but um whatever and then other people like you know you can get a waiver for um 
I don't know. There, there's just a lot of financial things that are out there. Um, like the college the app thing. Like every college app is like 60 bucks. And I'm like, well, that's like a copay or two, you know, and whatever. But you can get waivers for those things. And, and I feel like it, part of me feels guilty. Like, you know, like I am making most of my salary right now. But, you know, yes, it's a conscious decision right now as to what I'm spending money on. And, um... I guess lemons lemonade, you know, like it's a clear thing that when you're going through breast cancer treatments, you have a lot of unexpected bills and I have good health insurance, um, but still stuff pops up. And the more recent thing that popped up going back to yesterday, I had my appointment with Dr. Uh, with Dr. <laughs> I don't want to use their names I, with my oncologist. And, um, it was decided that I am going to start Lupron, um, injections to push my, um, to push my body into menopause. So let's see what emotional roller coaster that would be like. Um, it's funny because Lupron, as I was researching stuff, is used mostly for men with prostate cancer. Um, something with testosterone, which is interesting. But I, I mean, both my gynecologist and my oncologist were talking about that Lupron would probably be a good fit. So where I am right now is um, they just called. So I'll have my first Lupron injection next week. I was thinking like once I hit day 100, things will quiet down. But um, <laughs> now I have to go for my Lupron injection on Tuesday. And I have no idea what to expect with that. Um, <laughs> I said like I want to just kind of get going with it already. And I, I said, let's just go in on Monday because today's Friday. <laughs> And I'm like, wait, I'm getting my hair. See how gray my hair is? Like, I'm getting my hair colored um, on Monday, which I um, haven't done that in a while. And I'm like, well, at least I'll have good hair going into my Lupron injection. You know, you're in there, in and out. Um, and then, I don't know, let's join this freaking circus and this other circus and then see what happens. What's supposed to happen is that my ovaries go to sleep. Um, interestingly enough, from my research too, I read that your estrogen levels actually increase right after you start taking Lupron, um, like graphically, like you're here, your estrogen increases and then like it drops, you know, and the whole point is that my estrogen levels would drop, um, because we don't want estrogen because my cancer cells eat estrogen and I don't want that. I want them to die and go away. So, um, <laughs> I feel like this is the first vlog where I've truly been my, my like extreme sarcastic self, but you know, here, here, here she is. So, uh, yeah, the idea is to lower the estrogen levels, um, uh, force my body with the Lupron injections to go into menopause, which I'm fine with because like I have my two kids, I'm not having any more kids, don't really need my ovaries, don't really need my uterus for that matter, but don't need to have a hysterectomy, like why have surgery if you don't need to? Um, I'm probably not that far off from menopause anyway. I've been in perimenopause for probably about four years or so. Um, I'm guesstimating on that. Um, the tamoxifen, uh, the headaches, I'll have some coffee and that will help with the headaches. Um, I think I'm gonna, um, well, I'm driving, I have my son's car, I have my, <laughs> I have my son's car, that's funny, it's my car, oh god, that's so funny, because I haven't driven my car, <laughs> I've driven my car five times since surgery, so now I refer to it as my son's car, it's my car, <laughs> but I'm, uh, I will take my car and, uh, pick up something for breakfast, because my Kitchen is kind of not usable right now, and I don't have the mental capacity to deal with it right now without losing my shit to my property manager. Um, and I don't want to lose my shit today. <coughs> so I'm going to get myself some breakfast and then have some coffee for the headache to go away. Um, caffeine always helps my headaches to go away. Uh, I do need to um, be very aware with the caffeine. Uh, it helps with my stomach, too. Um but it's acidic and we all know like my tooth is chip <laughs> that you know my vanity has been out the window a because of like how I look right now my hair looks okay but anyway um I've had this chip tooth since I've been vlogging and I've <laughs> my front teeth like these are caps I don't know if I ever should share the story with you as to what happened with them as to why they're caps it's a it's a fun story but they're caps they're not real <laughs> These aren't real, and neither are these ladies. Ha! I'm just Mrs. Artificial. Wow. 
I have a titanium tooth. All the parts of me that aren't real. That's crazy. This isn't real nail polish. It's a sticker. <laughs> I feel like I'm like, like sadistically evil right now. Um, that's so funny. Because I used to joke that like, yeah, my front teeth aren't real. They look much better than my actual real teeth. But uh, part of it was poor dental care as a child. Part of it is genetics with my teeth. And part of it was that I was fooling around with my, um, like, horse around with my son when he was a baby, and he headbutted me and cracked my tooth in half. And that led to uh, uh, me capping one tooth, and you can't really just cap one front tooth because the coloring just won't look right. I have really good dentists, so they capped a bunch of them so it looked nice, but for whatever reason, I don't know why my um, my... Well, I should say, I really don't know why. This cap has been around for a long, long time. Long time. So caps only have like a certain shelf life and it shipped. And I, because of all the stuff that was going on, I, I like my teeth were not my number one priority. And I'm like, it is what it is. Um, so I left it. And normally I'd be much more concerned about my physical appearance. But with COVID and the pandemic and me not seeing anyone and having masks on and stuff, I'm like, what do I really care? I tried having this bonded like three times, but bonding doesn't stick to caps. So it has to get replaced. In order to replace it, I have to be able to sit in a dental chair and I can, you know, I it's uncomfortable to lay down. Um I'm I'm everywhere, so keep up. I know who my most favorite is people are by those that can keep up with my conversations because I know it's not easy sometimes. So um, very few people can keep up with my conversations <laughs> when I get like this because they're all over the place. So looping back over <laughs> uh, the Lupron shots. So, or I should say before that. So the tamoxifen, I'm having the headaches, um, not a lot, maybe three times a week or so but more than I usually have. Uh, and the night sweats. I didn't wake up sweating this morning, but I didn't really sleep a lot last night. I'm not sleeping a lot. I'm not sure what that's about again. Um, yesterday was just a really bad day overall, so I think I was just riled up. And I've been trying to sort out like how to sleep best with the night sweats. Like I had the window open, and it's fall here in New England. It's mid-October. So I don't know, like I'll have the window open, but then I'm freezing. And I think that's part of the tamoxifen. Uh, like what I've noticed too is my body temperature is dysregulated and I hate that feeling. Like when I get sick, I rarely get fevers. Um, that's how I knew when I had COVID that I'm like, this is weird. I never get fevers. And I had like a, my fever went up like four degrees in like an hour. It was crazy. It, it was just, it came on like super, super fast. Uh, so yeah, um, the headaches, the night sweats and, um, the hot flashes, I use flash loosely as a term cause it's not like a flash of heat for me. And apparently for lots of other people that as I talk to more people, oh, my boobs are so fucking heavy. Uh, as I talk to more people, it's not a flash of hot. I, I start feeling hot and like, um, it, I'll feel like that for like an hour and then I feel cold and I, you know, take, I, I, I layer a lot in my clothing because I don't know what my body temperature is going to end up being like. Um, but I will stay on the tamoxifen until, um, I mean, I have a check-in with the oncologist in, uh, five, six weeks. That seems really quick. I thought I was checking in with her further out than that. Oh, whatever. Uh, I'll take a shot next week, Tuesday, and then you time them ex four weeks and, and a day apart. So, um, yeah, the journey's not over. So every four weeks and a day, I go back to the hospital, go in for the shot, and then we'll see what happens. Um, in theory, well, not in theory, it's supposed to put my ovaries to sleep. Um, that has its side effects too. I'm hoping to not have those side effects. And then once I know, once they know that like my periods have stopped and I'm like in menopause, then uh, they will switch me from the tamoxifen to an aromatase inhibitor. Um, that has less side effects from my understanding than the tamoxifen does. But I think the hormonal aspect, no matter what you do, is going to cause, because even the Lupron causes hot flashes um, and other things too, like from what I read. 
you know, vaginal dryness, uh, you know, um, libido is impacted. Uh, what else is there? There's a whole long list. It's, it's, it's not fun things, but like, I know that just because it says that as a side effect doesn't mean that it's going to happen either. So fortunately, I found out yesterday that they have, it's amazing with this hospital, man, I'm telling you, they have someone for everything. And I said to her, like, you know, I'm not with a partner right now. I haven't been for a bit. I've been intentionally dating myself for a bit to, <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Anyway, especially during the pandemic. It's not like I was like going out on dates and stuff. Um, but anyway, I don't want to, um, like when you're off the medication, you're, you, you know, all those effects go away. Uh, the, the dryness, the libido, the hot flashes, all of that, which is good. Um, but they have a specialist at the hospital cancer center that I can't remember her title, but it's something about sexuality. And I guess in my conversations with the oncologist, and I've only met her like three times now. And she said that they have a woman um, and her title is sexual something or other, but she works with people like about the things I've been talking about, like, you know, I don't want to have a lower libido. <laughs> like, I like to be able to, you know, I, I told her, like, I, I was divorced and, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm single now. And, well, I've been single for a, a while, but um, it's like, I, I, I want to be able to have a, a, a healthy sex life. And, you know, now, aside from the cancer and stuff, I feel like my marbles are pretty much together and I have my act together and I feel good about myself ignoring the cancer for a minute. Um, like, I know that's a process and I'll get there, but overall, like before all this happened, I was in a really good place and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to like, you know, give my heart to someone again and then this, but that's not going to stop me. The point is I want to do what I can do so that, um, numbness in my fingers too is something weird. Mostly in my left hand. I don't know why in my left hand I've had more numbness in my fingers. Uh, I assume it's a blood circulation thing, but. It goes away. I don't know. Anyway, um, but they have a person that can work with you on that kind of stuff with, um, you know, you, how you feel libido wise and, and dealing with that, um, how you feel about body image. You know, I told her like body image, I'm not feeling great about my body right now. I, you know, I went to the court of honor last weekend and I wore a dress and I wore heels with like boots with heels and I can do things that externally make me look pretty. Um, but my body underneath, I mean, I've, I've, you know, I've lost the weight, um, not all the weight, whatever, but I've lost weight that I look, uh, my hips are still there, but I think those are just there to stay, which is fine, whatever. Um, but my waist is back down. It's not, it's still not distended again, which I'm thrilled about. Um, but I, my, my body image is not, um, is, is not in a good place. And, uh, I know that things are healing well and, and there's, there's, there's pros and cons to, to all this stuff. So like, I'll show you, like I'm having it, sleeping is still weird. Like I still, like right now I still, I'm in bed. Like I got out of bed and then went back into bed. Um, like I have this tank top on right now. And I'm not wearing a bra. And it's kind of cool that, like, I can look like this and not have a bra on. And not have to worry about having, like, THOs. If you don't know what that stands for, look on Urban Dictionary because I don't like to use the T word. But I don't have THOs because I have no nipples. Um, so, like, cosmetically, from the outside, I'm like, it looks pretty good. My waist is kind of normal. And I have, like, you know, decent boobs. That just weirds me out that when I go like this, there's nothing there. And I'm not wearing a sports bra. There's just, there's nothing there. Um, and like, I'll just update you on feeling. Like my feeling here, to like sternum wise, whatever, is totally there. I don't have the crazy sensory stuff like I used to. Remember those days? Oh my God, those were horrid. Those aren't there anymore. I haven't used Play-Doh in a long time. Um, but feeling wise, like I can, my armpit even here, like I can totally feel that. One good thing that I will say for potential suitors, I don't smell as bad anymore. <laughs> I know my left armpit, um, I can smell that like clearly because I can reach it. I can't reach my right to smell it yet. 
but I don't smell as bad as I used to. So I feel like that was something that with the lymph nodes or something that just had to work its way through my system. Maybe that was cured after eight weeks, who knows? But the body odor is not as, not nowhere near as bad as what it was before. Um, but it is kind of cool that you can, like they say, you can go out and you don't even have to ever wear a bra ever again, which is such a cool feeling. So like, that makes me happy. But feeling wise, like I can feel here slightly my scars are probably about here um and i feel some stuff on the bottom my right side is still pretty firm and i'm totally not being sexual with this i hope this doesn't get pulled it's just like <sighs> like when you have this done you don't know what to expect about what to feel and like like this is totally numb and I don't think people get like even two months out of surgery that like, I can't feel this. When I go to give someone a hug, I inadvertently like put my arm here or advertently, whatever. Um, I intentionally put my arm here. Well, not intentionally. I don't realize that I'm doing it. So whatever. I put my arm here because I kind of protect them because I can't feel and I don't want to hurt them. So, like, I can clearly feel the implant. It's still high. This one is still not settled down yet. Um, but, I mean, even look at my range of motion here. I can do this. I wasn't able to do this before. I still have sensitivity here. For whatever reason, I've had a lot more sensitivity on my left side. But it's not, like, I mean, yes, it's numb. It's, like, more numb right here in the middle. Um, without a shirt on, this part of my breast actually looks nice. This side doesn't look as nice. Um... It just seems like it's shifted over, but I know that that will, you know, change over time. Um, my other side seems, like, flatter. Like, kind of like it's wider. I don't know. Um, it has a prettier curve here. But this, like, totally numb. There's a lot. It's it, This one's, like, he heavier. Um, like, like, at the bottom. This one is just, like, overall heavy. Um... So like the stretchiness of the skin, I don't feel that as much as I did. So maybe like I can focus on on that. <laughs> um, I'm not feeling as much the pull, uh, but I don't want to wear a bra to bed because it's not comfortable, but I can't really wear nothing. When I wear nothing, it feels like they separate and like go to the sides a little bit and they don't really go much because like they're sewn in there. They're not going far, but when they move even in like a millimeter, you can feel it. And I have obviously my hundreds of pillows here and it's just, it would need to be a constant adjustment. Um, I keep looking at the timer, not at you, sorry. It's just like a constant adjustment. So I, I have to play around with my bedding again to figure out something with sleep. Um, and I think I have to like revisit some of my regular clothes that I used to have, that I used to wear to see what works. Like I haven't worn a tank like top like this cause I haven't been able to get it on. And my mobility in my right arm is somewhat better. I'm able to cross or put my hands like in a prayer pose above my head to about here with both hands, which is better than where I was even a couple days ago. Um, I do have to call physical therapy to get that going. I've been dilly-dallying with that. Um, a, because there's just been a lot of stuff going on um, with college apps and like FAFSA and CSS and all those fun acronyms. <laughs> But I have to get physical therapy going. That's my goal today is to call and to get that set up so I can start next week. Um, so today's my day 100. Uh, two of my friends I haven't seen in years reached out. Um, and they know each other and I'd love to see them both tomorrow. So hopefully that pans out and um, I can do something. I'm not sure how I want to celebrate originally I was like oh let me burn my bras but um I don't really know if I want to do that I don't know what I want to do it's not really a celebration I'm not done everyone's like you look not everyone certain people are like you look fine you look great looks like you didn't have anything done at all like no I didn't have anything done at all I just lied about all of this stuff you know <laughs> I didn't have anything done at all I w part of me wishes they would give me back my breast tissue when I was done and if I hear comments like that I'll just carry it around like in a ziploc and be like I had nothing done but you, you see this yellow gunk like yeah this is what they removed from my body you know this used to be part of this and then they took this jabby ice picky looking thing and went ee, 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 
I mean, literally, that's what it looks like on the video. And then they scraped all around. Like, I would love to give a show and tell to people that make those kind of comments. And I know they say it out of not knowing, but it comes across like, oh, it looks like nothing happened. Looks can be deceiving, you know? Looks like nothing happened. You got nice boobs out of the whole thing. Woohoo! Really? <sighs> the fuck is wrong with people? Sorry. <sighs> I'm in anger phase and I'm acknowledging that I'm in anger phase and that's just where I am. So I need to go eat something, have some coffee. I am not going to go walking today. I've, I'm up to like 20 miles in my American Cancer Society walk breast for breast cancer research. I know I've been doing really well with that. Um, but I, I don't have an enemy today. I have to just take care of me and have a down day today. So, um, I just, uh, I want to like sit in a park or something, but I don't, I have to stop moving because I've had a lot more pain and pressure in my breasts and my chest and I need that not to be the case. So, um, I have to stop. All right. So that's it. Um, tomorrow's day a hundred. Um, I feel like it's almost like a birthday, but like what the what the hell? What a, what a messed up birthday! Do you celebrate? I don't know. Do you destroy things? I don't know. What do you do? Uh, don't know. I never got the instruction booklet. It's crazy. It really makes you think. This six to ten week period, and I'm gonna leave it at that. Just really makes you think. And obviously, I'm in like an anger phase right now. But there is some, I'll end with a glass half empty, or full, sorry. <laughs> full, full. Um, it's very easy for me to get into like um, sarcasm land. and uh, But I have to say though that as much as you start to process more now because things are slowing down or slowing down. I feel like they're ramping back up again between physical therapy and the shots. But um, when it comes to people, there's a lot of learning I'm doing about people. About um, part of it is turning 52, I think. When you, when you turn a major milestone age, you start to, you know, think about your life and you know, where you want to be and what, you know, what works, what doesn't work, whatever. When I turned 40 is really when I started coming into my own and realizing like, what do I, what do I want the rest of my life to look like? And how do I get there? And um, I can't think of future right now with like career and stuff. I mean, I, I think I plowed that out a couple of years ago, what I want that to look like. Um, I want to be part of something bigger than myself with, with what I do as a career. Um, whatever that looks like. I want to do something that's like creating an impact with other people because I see the impact that I'm having even <laughs> with me being as open as I'm being. Um, but when it comes to people, <clears throat> I've learned a lot about people. I've learned about people that um, talk a good talk and then don't do any walking at all. They say stuff and to me, words don't really mean a whole lot. Cards are always great. But, like, it just reminds me I'm not alone. But a card, like, with no follow-up is just a card. I'm learning a lot about people. Um, and my long-distance friends have been, like, phenomenal for me during this whole thing. <laughs> and it sucks that they're all over the place. Um, and they've done things for me even from afar the people who are local, like, they're like, well, I'm working, so I can't do this. And I'm like, well, my friend lives like six states away and she did this. So whatever. People get weird when it comes to like certain stuff. And the people who get it are the people who've been through stuff too. And not for nothing, you know, you could call it baggage, call it whatever you want. I call it like those are those, those are my tribe people, the people that have been through crap and have come out the other side and give back because they know what it's like to go through crap. Those are my people, you know, they, they get it and they're there to help. Um, and there's a lot of them that are not there to help. 
and say all these things, but then don't show up. And I don't have the patience for it. The lack of integrity that I'm finding in humans <laughs> is part of what's making me in such an angry place. Because, you know, in, in Gen Happy Land, everyone has integrity and everyone does, you know, what they say that they're going to do when they say they're going to do it. And that's not reality. And some people you expect to not be integrous. Other people you expect to be that way. And then when they're not, you're like, well, what, do you, well, what, what was that all about? And I get no one's perfect. But when it happens repeatedly, it's like, well, do I want to be around that? You know, that fluidity of circles thing. If you haven't watched that vlog, you should watch that. Because uh, it's amazing the fluidity of what happens. And when there are people that are not good for me to be around right now. And, and I push them to the outer circle because they are not good for me to be around right now. And then lo and behold, somebody pops in and you're like, wow. And you laugh. Like, I laughed a couple of days ago at a meme that was sent to me, which was a little inappropriate, but I found it funny. <laughs> and I haven't laughed like that. Definitely not since surgery, but in a long time. And um, like, yeah, those are my people. Those are people that need to be in my life. Yeah. All right, I need to have coffee. How am I going to have coffee? I can't use my coffee maker. Ugh! Did I mention my kitchen scenario? I don't even know. Whatever. I have my car. So I'm going to take my braless self with my boobs that look like I'm wearing a bra, even though I'm not. It's too cold to have to go just like this. It would be too much pressure on the stairs. I'd be like holding onto them for dear life. Um, I'm going to pick up some food and bring it back here to eat because I can't really use my kitchen to food prep. Um, that's what I'm going to do to celebrate my day 99. All right, everyone. Uh, I will see you soon. Can't see you see you tomorrow. I probably won't vlog tomorrow because it's day 100. I feel like we're not doing that. All right. Toodaloo. See ya. Bye.